Alright, uh, three questions, video responses to a couple of people. Head of the box guy, uh, very, yeah, likable, nice guy. Um, and uh, the plant guy, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah the, I don't know, he sounds kind of like a Transylvanian like vampire eater. Um, or something like that. Um, yeah, interesting um, character kind of a person. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, the first video was really irritating, but it got better. Um, his humanity um, became apparent, and uh, I appreciate that in even religious kooks. Um, they're just trying to find the right answer, I would say. I mean, at least he's, he's not religious as a cover for some sort of shit agenda. So there's that's the difference. You know, many there's so many religious people who are only religious because they have a shit agenda. Like I resent people having sex, so I'm against abortion. That kind of crap. And yeah, he's not one of those people. Um, but yes, he he's wrong about everything. But yeah. anyway, but we'll get to him. Um, so this guy, uh, head of the box guy. Yeah, I don't remember you from Logger Heads uh, or Dome or whatever. Anyway, but, <laughs> good. Um, all right, so yeah, he sort of was interesting on the subject of masturbation. Okay, you know, it's a weird, awkward kind of subject, so sorry. I have to get awkward. Um, but it has to do with this whole idea of sensual pleasure, and um, to me, the bigger part of the game is that it's all a head game, right? I mean, it's all just an orchestration that takes place in our head, and when you think about how, how silly it almost is, you know, how controlled we are by these little bits of sensation, a little touch or something, you know, the whole touchy-feely thing. And even, you know, I've brought up before, like, vertigo is just such an interesting syndrome. I mean, I have an anxiety disorder, and I found that kind of interesting, that I'm so controlled by this, this ability to feel shitty for no good reason, because I have some thoughts in my head, and they make me feel like shit. And vertigo is the same way. You just have an image you just show me a picture of a of a long drop, and I'm get nauseous. And it's like, <laughs> how does that happen? How does this picture do that inside my brain? And um, so anyway, that whole conversation of of how we're controlled by these these mechanisms of our sensibilities is, I think, uh, a rich area of exploration in terms of getting to the root of what we're hungry for and why we're so hungry and why we're addicted and all that kind of crap. So anyway, it is interesting. So anyway, he, he was very down on um, masturbation um, in that it, uh, you know, it doesn't have that, it's like the surprise touch kind of thing. It doesn't have that, um, you know, when you know it's coming, it doesn't feel as interesting. You know, it's like hard to tickle yourself, but somebody else can tickle you kind of thing. And I get that, but I also, um, you know, I can also see how having control over the sensations like in a kind of an anaconovod kind of way, where you master, you know, the mechanism, uh, to some extent, is also uh, gratifying. So I would argue that, yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem with being with somebody is, is that they do a lot of bad touch, you know, because they don't know how hard to squeeze or how, you know, and, and so then it's, it's, there's a certain awkwardness sometimes. I mean, I'm not saying it's not sensual to touch, light touch, you know, but it's like getting that right is always kind of a trick. And then there's the obligation of you getting it right with somebody else, which is a big, who needs that pressure? Uh, you know, it's just a kind of a pain in the ass to figure out, oh, how does this, okay, yes, give me the instruction book. And if you give you the person the instruction book, then that ruins the fun, because then you know what's coming. So it's almost this whole thing where I have to surprise you in the right way, and it's, it's like being pranksters or something. And I just, I have no, I don't like being a prankster. And it's almost like good sex requires you to be some kind of prankster. It's just not my style. But good for me is yeah, just take control and fuck. So that part I can do. <laughs> you know, I know how to do that for my for, for, for my benefit. Um, and that part's fun. Yes, um, better than masturbating. No, okay, I'll concede the point. But I'm just saying that you can certainly use the self thingy, the control mechanisms, the uh, you know, in your own. Frickin' ability to imagine and 
you know, it can be a pretty good virtual reality replacement for the reality, in my opinion. So I don't, you know, I'm certainly saying fine. Yeah, I understand that people have different strokes, different folks and stuff, and different um, ways of interacting. And maybe I'm just hypersensitive, and so I need a controlled environment um, to, um, you know, get the most out of it, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, yeah, I've sort of with time become more and more comfortable with the solo game. Uh, versus the more complex, mutually beneficial, blah, 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 love thing. Uh, it just seems like an awful lot of work. Uh, but that's, like I said, I just might have habitized. Uh, but anyway, this is an interesting a conversation about just the idea of what we're playing with is just a, a few bits of information that come in, just tiny bits of data. And somehow this tiny bit of data, woo, good, that tiny bit, bad. You know, and it's just such a subtle line uh, that we're playing with. And uh, that is just sort of a fascinating part of the whole programming of our identity and how we function and how people function in the world and what turns them on and what, all, you know, so much room for conversation in terms of playing with the details of how you can create all these different kinds of people with just these subtle little changes in what they like or dislike. Just change a couple of little tiny likes and dislikes and you come up with, you know, Trump supporter versus anyone else but. Um, anyway. And it's just, you know, it's, I mean, it's also the biggest tragedy of being human is that we're so owned by these personal sensibilities. You know, devastating. Anyway, okay, uh, how much selfishness? Um, yeah, so you really didn't get the most out of that question, I don't think, in terms of recognizing. I, I, like, I liked your answer. I mean, he answered with basically the a point like, um, um, oh, yeah, so the point is on, on the other subject that he, he enjoys sex and it's very important to his life and yeah, he really wouldn't want to live without it. Um, but um, he, he likes it to be part of this more natural construction, <laughs> you know, the, the, the more natural performance. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so, so, but, but it's sort of an interesting, I mean, the way he bent it into, it was more like, um, what's our, 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 not only our obligation to, um, try not to be imposing, but also the obligation to correct something else that might be wrong like jump on the grenade to solve somebody else's problem. So not even like creating a problem for somebody else, that's one subject. Solving a problem for somebody else is another subject. And I don't mind the two getting blended, but I'll just make that distinction. I was sort of just talking about the one side of the subject, which is, you know, how, <clears throat> and, and how do we evaluate how good or bad the circumstance is now? Because we certainly do live in a world now where we're obligated in just performing as a regular citizen to essentially endorse a kind of raping and molesting of the world's uh, deprivated and and powerless people and um, they're being you know brutalized uh, to service our needs and that's sort of the bigger picture I was heading for and just how much of that can we justify not only all the bugs we kill not only all the the inadvertent you know, just driving to the grocery store is sort of, you know, you're taking the risk that you might kill somebody and blah, 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 blah. Um, and is this any way to live, you know, with this built into the structure? I mean, how much of that do I build into the structure before you finally say, okay, there's just too much disease here and not enough cure, not enough healthy. You know, we've spent too much of our life diseased. Um, well, that's a whole other subject. Piero brought up the other, you know, talking about how things have gotten better. And, you know, in so many ways, they're not better because we're spending so much more time disabled and diseased and dying. We die more than once now. You know, people survive their death <laughs> to have another one later. That's not exactly good news. I mean, in the past, at least you only had to die once. Anyway, um... Okay, so that's probably enough. You know, and it, it, if something didn't kill you in two weeks, it wasn't going to kill you kind of thing. You know, now it's, stuff can kill you for years. 
Anyway, um, so anyway, but that's an interesting answer. Thank you. Um, and then the last one was in the inherent subject. It sort of didn't, you know, didn't get that one exactly right either. It was talking more about the specific issue of the people who do absolutely nothing. They're just born to it, like an emperor or something. They're just entitled from birth, um, birthright, um, ownership. Um, but yes, that's even more insidious is the birthright thing, you know, to add... Uh, insult to the injury, if you want to say it that way, um, is the idea that uh, the people, once they collect or have, they get an automatic paycheck. You can't almost, it's almost, uh, they, they're not allowed to fail, too big to fail, um, in the sense that the only way to fail is to be, you know, insanely stupid. You can't lose the money if you just barely play any kind of game at all. You know, if, if, as long as you don't play with matches, you know, the house doesn't burn down, um, the castle. Um, and having such a system where all the rest of us have to live in a landmine full of gasoline, and uh, what sense does this make? And it makes no sense, it can't be defended, and of course this guy's not defending it, and he's against it, but uh, like I said, that's more the point I was getting to, is just, you know, how do we, how do, how do we justify this bullshit of of having an, uh, an unearned economy in the biggest percentage of the economy. <laughs> like to take 98% of the economy and just say, we're going to make that part unearned and we're going to force the rest of you to earn this other 2%. How can anybody defend it? It's insanely stupid. I mean, shouldn't, you, shouldn't we hate on people who defend that? I mean, shouldn't we consider them worse than monarchs almost? I mean, monarchs had more of an excuse. They thought they were born to it because God said so or some other kind of crap. Um, they had a whole big narrative to go with their story, not just some stupid thing like, we've duped the stupid into thinking this is a good idea, that somehow it's harmless, that money grows on actual rich people trees, and that us poor people would be starved if it wasn't for the rich people to make all the good stuff for us. Because they don't really understand that no, there's only one pie, and if they're eating it all, you're not going to eat any, idiot. All right. Um, you know, you're going to have to work a lot harder for your piece, because there's going to be a lot of people after the one little crumb left on the plate. Fools. If they have ten houses, you're, you're going to have ten less houses. All you poor people together, they have. we have to take your houses away to give them to them. Anything they have had to come out of your stuff, the stuff you're competing for. So as long as you're too stupid to figure that out, um, then you're too stupid to realize why you're in poverty. Uh, why you're working way too hard for way too little. Alright. Um, so then he, his questions, okay. I asked me uh, if I knew of this Scott Clifton guy, and of course I'm going to call him this Scott Clifton guy because I have no clue who that is. <laughs> so it's apparently some atheist that must be some kind of contrast to me in some way, I guess. But um, I suppose I could type the name and see who it is. But uh, I don't know. I'll see if it's worth. If there's something there, I'll respond to it. Um, all right. Then control was a word he liked as a question. I don't know exactly what the question was because it wasn't really phrased as a direct question. But this idea of being able to. Um, understand what the likelihoods of something are, you know, what, what your chances are, what your probabilities are, and by orchestrating all of that stuff rationally, like like knowing stuff, like simple stuff, like, well, if you borrow your kids' money, uh, you know, if you're mortgaging uh, their future and forcing them to pay it, that that's not a very, you know, that somehow that's not going to work because they're not going to have any resources to mortgage when they have their kids, so they're not going to be able to do the same thing. So these one-timer things, you know, figuring out stuff that is a real cheat because it's can only it's a kind of cheat that can only be done once, um, and then calling that your civilization. Like we get, you know, the writers of the bullshit, and nobody else can live by the bullshit because it's unsustainable. It's not going to work. Uh, it has no future. It has to end because it's the uh, the curve is going the wrong direction. Um, anyway. This way, this way. Um, so yeah, but it's an interesting subject, and obviously I, I would put virtual reality in the context of that subject in the sense that, that yes, you can create virtual environments are, are even 
you know, even socially liquid environments like a nightclub or something. You create a mood, an atmosphere. You can maximize people's experience, you know, minimize their need for drugs and bullshit because you have enough lights flashing or some other kind of bullshit so you can kind of maximize an experience. And we can do that. We can create infrastructure and resources to make life easier or we can make life harder. Um, by organizing it, and that's all good. And like ideally, in virtual reality, you can do that the cheapest, you know, because it's it's just bits of information then, and you don't have to actually build the castle you live in. All right, uh, and then the last one was do I know the Christies? And now there, there's two Mendums, right? So I'm in Mendum, but I'm in I'm in the real Mendum. And then there's this little fake Mendum called Mendum Township. <laughs> and yes, it's half of Mendum, but it's the bogus, silly half. And that's where all the really silly rich people live. Yeah, the sort of uh, active, real people kind of rich live in the borough. And the silly rich, preposterously and silly, they live in the township. Because they have like little mansions on, out in the woods and stuff. You know, they're not, they're not city rich, they're, they're um, estate rich. So, yeah, all the estate rich are in the township. So, it's not the same... It's still within walking distance, most of it, but I'm just saying I don't I don't visit the township very often. It's actually right across the street. See, the other side of the street out here is the township, but that's not like the township township. That's just a little bit township. Anyway, the point is I, do, I live in the borough part, so yeah. it's where the better people live. So we say. I mean, everybody does that, right? All right, so um, thank you, and on to the other a guy who admits he's crazy, and you know he really does sound like a vampire eater, you know, from Transylvania or something. Uh, maybe I'll play some of his video here at the end. I don't know. Uh, I still have it loaded. Uh, probably not. So, uh, but I could always load a piece of it, I suppose. Oh, that's Richard. Richard Feynman is different. Yeah. Okay, that's not. That's not a vampire eater. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, like I said, I sort of, um, um, yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's an interesting conversation, but okay, in the beginning he's wrong. And I, you know, I, look, I ask a simple question. I mean, should we, should we allow people to make a free choice, have a right to say no mas or say no thank you to the gift of life? And he just evades it and keeps saying you have the right, which would be the same thing as me saying you're to a woman looking for an abortion and I've prohibited her from going to a proper medical facility and having it done by somebody who knows how to do it and all that kind of stuff. And instead I just said, well, aren't there coat hangers? You have the right. There's coat hangers. There's a whole bunch in my closet. Just, you know, you can have one of those if you want. You have a right to an abortion. That's just a bullshit answer. And he didn't really address that, and um, he doesn't really want to deal in any kind of social policy way. He's this apolitical stuff, and and that's to me really, um, I really hate that. Um, this idea that uh, well, I have it written down later in my notes, but I'll say it here just because I'll probably run out of time before I get down here anyway. Um, yeah, being an uncitizen is not being harmless. So he thinks he's a nobody and he's harmless. But you're really not, because you have to live based on tentacles of civilization that you're connected to. And um, so you can't really ever say you're free of it. And uh, to, even, if you, even if you were free of it, if you're standing there, you see this monstrosity over here that's dysfunctional and the wheels wobbling badly and the whole car is crooked and, you know, triangular and, you know, it just... And you know how to fix it, or you know what would fix it. You know little things, even the obvious things. To not do anything to make it better is like seeing a wounded animal. You know, and all it needs is a, you know, just a little, tie a little rag around its little injured paw or something. You know, you don't have to radically change who it is or do anything major. You just have to do a little band-aiding here and there, and some of that little stuff can make a difference. And I'm just saying it's a little thing, um, in my opinion, of harm mitigation is to allow people the, the, the dignity to die um, by volition alone, not by, I'm going to force you to be desperate. So it's not just because you, 
want to die, you're going to have to want it desperately. And again, a woman's right to abortion is kind of dependent on her um, being able to make the choice free of any unnecessary um, obligation to do it in a manner that's uh, insensibly brutal and risky. And the same is true for people, and it's just bullshit. You just evaded the subject, in my opinion. Um, all right, so um, so he, his argument is God's in control, we're not. Um, which, again, who wants God's control? So he's making this argument, essentially, that government sucks, and society is shit, and culture is bullshit. And yet he's going to argue that somehow God's civilization rules are so much better. And God is worse, in my opinion. We, we don't punish children for the crimes of the parent. Right? I mean, I think we might, I think we should punish parents for the crimes of the children. That might be a good idea. Um, you know, thinking about just recent events and other things. It's just, you know, there, has, there should be some penalty. Parents should pay a little bit more price than, oh, you humiliated me <laughs> by being an asshole. Yeah, maybe they should pay a financial price if, they're, if, they have, if they have money. They should pay a financial price. And if they don't have money, maybe they should do um, social work for the rest of their life. They have to go, you know, every weekend and and work off the um, social damage their spawny little monsters did. And maybe people take being a parent a little more seriously when they saw you had to pay for the fact that you, you birthed a monster. You know, you created a shit. Because it really shouldn't be that hard not to create a complete shithead. Really should. I mean, somebody who can actually kick somebody in the face. You should be able to create somebody who doesn't kick other people in the face. And if you can't manage that, you probably should be you know, serving turkey to the homeless and whatnot. Well, not turkey. Snurky. Or burky. Or bedurky. Yeah. Anyway, um, so again, your argument that God is this wonderful system idea, he's using the same fucking things. You're saying, don't put, no, prison is bullshit, or this is bullshit. How can you say that when God's doing it? He's, he's sitting there threatening us with hell. He proved it by the imposition of the penalties for Adam and Eve's minor crimes. And look at the major torment that the human race is in for these minor crimes. I mean, you know, shouldn't we just start off with a clean slate? Shouldn't I be, shouldn't I be presumed innocent until proven guilty? Because frankly, I, I was pretty, I was a pretty, when I was, when I was a little kid, I was pretty, not much of I the very little maniacal behavior. I was just looking for a fair game to play, you know, something that didn't bite or sting or, in some way, um, imposition on me. You know, I mean, I was happy I didn't have leprosy, but I just mean it, it, it's it's just you know I did have some benefits of not being horribly burdened like some people are born with. But I mean, it's, you get it. I mean, I don't know how you defend. You're, you're, you're sitting there worried about Stalin and worried about Hitler. Worry about your God. Because, frankly, I can't, I can't see how he has better ethics. He annihilates people, does genocides. He does all of this horrible shit. And, he, and again, this whole idea of punishing the rest of all of us for, for this presumptive crime, this, this complete heresy of Eve of not respecting God's judgment and saying... I told you not to touch something, and I made you curious, and now I'm going to beat the shit out of you for eternity for it. I mean, what the fuck is that? So maybe you think that's a good um, president, but I think God sucks as president. I mean, it's worse than Donald Trump. All right. <clears throat> um, so God's in control, blah, blah, blah. Again, it's just a, a whole denial of the fact that there are practical mechanisms so even even said it so far as to almost imply that you couldn't have prevented World War II. And of course you could. There, there can be better and worse outcomes. And there was no obligation to have World War I or to have World War II. There was no obligation to have the war in Iraq. Now, all these things were, were events that you could turn around exactly the opposite way. I mean, I've said so many times, the moment on George Bush, when he showed up on that pile of corpses on 9-11, he could have turned that into an inter international moment of... Hey, uh, you know what I'm saying? You, you just don't fight this way, okay, you girly boys. Um, this terrorism shit, I mean, it's for losers, okay? 
you just made a bunch of victims. Okay, fine. You hurt some people who never did anything to hurt you. Okay, nothing malicious by overt thought. And you decide to make them victims so you could hurt somebody else. Because why? Because you can't make an argument? Because you can't persuade people? Because your God doesn't have the power to, to control their thoughts? Do you really think your God wants you to do what you did? Well, anyway, I'm just saying he could turn it into... He could have turned it into us being victims, and instead he turned us into bullies. And that was just... So I'm just saying the world could have turned on those kind of events. Those events are incredibly important. And uh, I think it's just bullshit to say nothing changes, nothing gets better, that's all crap. Um, people have improved, generally speaking, and the knowledge does make us better, and culture can make us more sophisticated and have higher conversations. I mean, what, you don't think Sam Harris, even if you don't like Sam Harris, you don't think he's elevated human conversation? I mean, this is just such bullshit. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so he says he wishes for a better world, but I'm just saying, look, it's not about wishing. Um... At minimum, we know we're here, okay? Like I said, your your God theory is just, you know, it's not very heavily evidence-based. Uh, I would argue that, you know, being reasonable, you got to say, well, we know this exists. We know the lifeboat game's going to be played. I mean, whether it's part of some bigger game, okay, maybe, maybe not. And I'm not saying there's anything we would do here on the lifeboat would jeopardize going to heaven. I mean, us being political... And us trying to find civilization rules and creating deterrence and creating incentives for people to be sophisticated and giving and generous and all that stuff, rewarding that kind of thing in this world, will not deny you, uh, uh, you know, the gift of, of, of your, your better world. It really won't. Forcing people, okay, with incentives and disincentives is not going to deny you access to heaven. I mean, most of them. I mean, unless you want to get insane and say torturing people or something. That's not what I'm defending. But the idea that um, we can create deterrence that works here. And again, it's just the same theory that your own God is working under. He's working on the same theory of reward and punishment. What else is he talking about? The whole fucking religions. All these religions are based entirely on the idea of promise of reward and punishment. What else is there? It's not he's not just God isn't saying, well look, it's not going to change how you get treated in heaven. <laughs> okay, there's no difference. Everybody's going to get treated the same. I just want you to do the right thing. He's not making that argument to people. He's not making a philosophical argument and say, look, just do the right thing. All right? Yeah, I'm not going to give you anything extra. I'm not going to give you anything worse. I'm just telling you, do the right thing, because the right thing is the right thing to do. Be a grown-up. See, and so your God is even afraid that that, doesn't, that isn't going to work. He can't, he's afraid to make this, this argument for civilization. He can't even argue for civilization. So I'm just saying, that this guy have a cop-out. Your God is a bad example. Um, there's human beings here on Earth that do care, and do want to make a better world, and and do have uh, a, a real sincere effort to do that and to do it honestly and to do it with the hard work of actually thinking about it and actually uh, implementing sophisticated and complex solutions to problems that actually fix things. There's people here willing to do that. So this bullshit answer that no, we can never do anything, we can never progress, we can never advance the circumstance, we can't make life on the lifeboat any better cop out. Just bullshit. Alright, fairness can be imposed. And that's the whole thing. Like I said, God has his whole, he has a 10 million rules of how to play God soccer. And all we're, all I'm saying is we're playing human soccer here. And all we, we have to have for any of those these rules, for, for it to mean anything, for me to say uh, do unto others as you have others do unto you, it can only work if we have the rule and we have a referee. Because if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, if you get what I'm saying. If we allow too many people to cheat, then the principle has no pragmatic value. It will not produce the value you intend it to produce. I mean, Jesus' principle makes sense because it breaks this chain of revenge. So the idea of forgiving seven times, seventy times makes sense. 
and it's not even like you have to do that. He's really just trying to get you to forgive once. Because that's all you need to do usually. You only have to get, forgive a few times to clean up most of the messes in your life and to break the revenge cycle. And that's really all it's about. It's about just breaking the cycle of violence. You, you, you offend me, you throw the brick, I throw the brick back. I, you know, that's all. That's all that's for is the ideal of it. But to have it as a practical mechanism, people have to have some guarantee. And if there's no, I mean, I, of course, if you went to heaven, guess what? If you went to heaven and do unto others didn't work, it wouldn't be heaven anymore, right? It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't, you, you, you'd find it just useless because all the cheaters win then. There has to be a referee for fuck's sake. So again, you're cheating by comparing it to a, a, a circumstance where God's going to be referee. And I'm just saying we can be referee. We can do this fairness thing. It's not that complicated. Fairness isn't that hard. So anyway. Uh, let's see. Laws and jail won't fix it. Well, I think the right laws and the right jails will. Um, and um, but, but certainly you have to first start off with human beings. I mean, yes, you know, laws and you can't pass a law that says don't be stupid and then have no penalty for being stupid. You know what I mean? Nothing to prevent stupid. It's just not practical. It's like if you have no garbage cans on planet Earth and then you say it's against the law to litter. Well, it's sort of impossible not to, right? So we create these slummy, crappy environments. We let retards and morons have too many kids. They get raised by people who have no functionality. And they end up having no culture and are essentially fucking animals. And, oh yeah, we're, laws don't work. It's not the law's fault. <laughs> okay, it's the civilization isn't fixing the, 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 the problem. It isn't providing the garbage cans. However you want to metaphor it. But, yeah, it can't just pass a law a, a, a prohibiting something that it makes impossible for there not to exist. I mean, the, the criminal element's going to keep existing if you keep creating people that are way too stupid to figure out that um, they shouldn't be a shithead. <sighs> anyway, so he calls himself an ultimate nobody. Let's see, I, and then he... Uh, is uh, well, yeah, competition is another. So, so this was a whole. This is a whole another subject you really get into. Um, you know about what's fun. So yeah, he thought my pinball analogy was um, you know laughable, uh, but I just meant anything that somebody could pick as a fun thing to be doing. But most of the things we find fun are fun. You know, not sexual things are fun merely because of the competition. We love competition. We love you know conquering and winning. And is that really what heaven's going to be? Is we're just going to go up there and actually play soccer? You know, shirts against uh, uh, no shirts, whatever that was called, skins. Yeah, shirts and skins. That was a perverse kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, anyway, school is really perverted. Group showering and things. It's perverted. Um, anyway. <laughs> fucked up. Anyway, I mean, you're shouting with the wrong group, you know. Uh, it could make sense, you know, <clears throat> the other way around. Um, all right, um, but, it's, you know, good material for fantasies, anyway. Um, I don't impose law. Um, so, so again, you, it's the only way, if you want, if you want fairness, you, the referees have to force it. They have to force the game. They have to throw the flags. They have to be. They have to create the mechanism. If you don't create the rules against it, they'll get broken. If you don't have umpire saying you can't put cork in the bat, you know people are going to put cork in their bat. You don't have a rule saying you can't take steroids. They're just going to take steroids. So this whole denial that you know, I look, I live in the real world. Again, you you want to just argue that God exists and everybody should just you know take a nap and just wait for God. Fine, but don't pretend that these are practical solutions. To the real world problems because you're not you, this isn't a practical solution okay i mean um running away is not a good battlefield strategy so if there's no there's, if this isn't a war that you think's worth fighting then fine just say it's not a war worth fighting you don't think we can make life the life on the lifeboat better i think we can um, and even if the whole damn thing's going to sink in the end, so what? We can play the violins and die with some dignity, or we can d die disgracefully. 
and uh, that's a good enough difference for me. I, that's enough of a difference for me. Um, fuck it. All right. So do under the others. Uh, yeah, it just means nothing without uh, referees. I mean, if you don't have somebody to impose the simple rules, then the simple rules really won't work in the end. As much as I love them as principles, there's no there's no point in having uh, reverence for the principle when you know that the principle really needs everybody to play along. And if everybody doesn't play along with the principle, then the principle has no value. So you have to get the people who don't want to play the right game, who don't want to play by the rules, you have to get them out of the game somehow. You have to get them into the penalty box. Uh, let's see. There is always would World War II. Now we could prevent that or that God uses deterrence. Uh, yeah, threats of violence. I mean, it's all, it's, the whole Bible is just one big threat of violence against you. Um, it's this first, this insult that you're a criminal, even if you commit no crime, and then this threat that unless you sit there and say, okay, I'll wear the badge, God, I have the God badge, I'll wear it, you know, bless me with the water to prove that I'm a member of the God Club, uh, I mean, then I'm doomed to forever torment because I didn't, you know, cower to the God. And you're saying that's better than government. Government is somehow worse than that God. A God who behaves worse than, you could, you could put Pol Pot and Mussolini and Hitler and every disgraceful piece of shit that ever existed and you could put them all together and they couldn't come up with a, a, a more harsh dictatorship than Christianity. No way. So what are you arguing for? You're sitting there arguing to me that, here, I have the answer. The worst dictator ever imagined or possibly fabulized in the history of fables. God is worse than the wicked witch of the West. It's worse than the witch who shoo, you know, shoveled Hansel and Gretel into the frickin' oven. Right? Or it's the other way around. I guess it was Hansel and Gretel with the evil little bastards. Anyway. Um, it's worse than the big bad wolf. Alright. Why would he end his punishment? He suffer more for the sins of... We suffer for... Uh, well, anyway, um, uh, obviously we're we're being punished for Adam and Eve. Like I said, we're being ridiculed, and and um, he doesn't ever apply his same rules, right? Where's forgive seven times seventy times? Again, women weren't forgiven. Eve was never forgiven, and because her punishment was never removed, you deny that. Or do you just say, well, that's just the pretend part of the Bible. God didn't really impose those things. Those are natural functions. Yes, I would agree they are natural functions. Evolution produced them. But I'm just saying, once you start editing your Bible, you know, then you're in trouble. Because then you have to explain why God didn't do that to his own book. That he can't really be a living God if he can't fix his own book. He can't even make the editors write the right words in his own fucking book. His own biography. He can't even control the text in his own biography. So then your religion gets lamer and lamer, doesn't it? I mean, it starts to turn into, like, the penguin religion. Yeah. A little cold bird sitting on an egg. Anyway. Um, yeah, so being an uncitizen is not harmless. That was a big one here. Big, big, big. Uh, you know, that you just can't run away. There's the battle, it's going to be won or lost, and there's just, there's just no not participating. It's just, you can't, you can't play that game and say, I didn't do any harm. You did do harm. Um, yeah, if you're not afflicting the comfortable and comforting the afflicted, <laughs> you're doing harm. Alright, anyway. So then I just made a joke. I mean, you know, we could, you know, leave it up to God. Leave it up to God. Leave it up to God. Um, it's like leaving it up to the great grasshopper or something. Leave it up to nature. I mean, it's just not an answer. 
we're smarter than this. We can do better than this. And we're not going to do better than this if people like you, who, who are sensitive and uh, can appreciate um, the real, the harsh brutality of the game we're caught in, um, the, 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 the depraved nature of our psychology, these are things you appreciate. And your participation in, in the suppression of those things owning us is important. And you're just as you you're gonna diminish the importance of it with this abdication, you know, to the to the God fantasy. But again, see I wrote down need and cope because I understand that you know, I, I who am I to tell you that this is the only thing that you makes life livable for you and so I can understand that. But I guess I just can't understand the um What's the right way to say it? I mean, if you have to do it, that's fine. But again, you probably shouldn't be trying to persuade anybody else to use the same kind of mechanism. Because I don't think the mechanism creates people who have the... If, if somebody else has the ability to do more than you or to cope with more than you, maybe you shouldn't have them turn into dysfunctional copers and rather be functional copers. So I guess that would be my only argument is God negates your functionality and we need people who are functionally coping I wish you weren't an idiot I wish you would open up your perception a little more or crazy slash I am crazy truly idiot slash crazy okay okay <laughs> yes, it does have a sense of humor. Uh, we'll play a little, so we'll jump ahead a little bit. I'm going at it in a different perspective as you are. If I'm not thinking or lying because of that, then yeah, I don't know. I didn't walk in your shoes. You didn't walk in mine. We have each other's or we. Yeah, but that's the thing. Again, like I said, I, th I think we we have walked. A lot of the same trails in life and we've seen the sunsets and we've seen the trees and we've seen the we've had the happy we heard the little bird song or we heard we've had these common things <clears throat> it's just for the lack of a few little things a few little irritations a few things like you know that sound drives you nuts and I go oh isn't that lovely something like that you know, these little tiny little things are creating huge differences in perception just because of a little bit of mechanical inconsistent function. You know, a little bit of, of dread in a different place. And, uh, you know, our psychology builds around that little bit of that kernel, like an oyster. It builds a, a pearl of bullshit or a pearl of knowledge. But anyway, uh, appreciate it. Um, yeah, so like I said, not as not as horrific as I thought the whole thing was going to be, and um, yeah, I appreciate the input. And uh, so let's uh, continue uh, the conversation, and uh, I'll ask some new questions and such. Elkily doke. Till next time.